This is Paul, representing TCWEP. You know those momentous events that only happen every 20 years or so because they are so important and perhaps cost about a grand per person to attend? And if just one detail goes wrong, you may get your head chopped off? Metaphorically, of course. Our upcoming horror story comes from a Twin Cities event industry expert. Her event industry knowledge has been highlighted in such publications as Corporate and Incentive Travel Magazine, Bustle Online, and more. She has won three International Live Event Association Awards and been a three-time speaker at the National Special Event Conference. Currently, she works with the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce as the Development and Engagement Manager and is the Vice President of Marketing and Communications of MPI. A decade ago in 2009, she became the Volunteer Program Manager for the Twin Cities Wedding and Event Professionals and has been serving in that position ever since. We, of course, are speaking with none other than Elizabeth Sherry. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, Paul. How are you? (laughs) I'm well. I'm very well. I have a burning question for you. Uh Uh-oh. How did you first know you wanted to work in the hospitality event industry? Oh, gosh. You know how sometimes you don't feel like there's a choice that chooses you? <laughs> yes. uh, that's probably what I'm going to say is my answer is that I'm a third generation uh, hospitality professional, I guess you could say, in our family. So starting third with generation. the airlines, okay. yeah, third generation, yeah. starting with the airlines and then um, both my grandparents and then my my parents were in the airlines for over 30 years. So um, that was kind of my adaptation to hospitality. And then the hospitality industry, I think, transformed beyond just airlines and went to hotels and events. And then they became a, a degree for it, which was even more special. So I went to Stout and uh, that's really where I found my love for the uh, event planning industry. Well, that's fantastic. I've heard, oh, and I'm sure a lot of people that know you too, I mean, I've heard you mention just some tips and charming things from your grandmother and even your aunt. Um, so it sounds like it runs in your family's bloodline a little bit. Yes, family events are very well-timed <laughs> <laughs> and um, well-orchestrated and can sometimes have a theme and definitely require an RSVP. So, <laughs> in, in fact, family weekends when everyone's in town has a full schedule of events and airline codes of when people are coming in and timeline logistics. So, yes, it is in the family. <laughs> That's all built in. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that your event related horror story may have something to do with something like that timelines and all that kind of stuff. Can you tell us? Give me a rundown of this horror story that you're going to be sharing with us and listeners. How did you know it was based on a timeline? It really is. It's so <laughs> funny that you say that. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think a few of us industry professionals uh, remember Super Bowl Fifty Two that blessed the city of um, of Minneapolis St. Paul. Ooh, yes. Yeah, February. Yes. We hadn't hosted a Super Bowl in over twenty five years, so a lot of the folks who were planning these events and then, you know, the course the two year wait into it didn't really know what to expect because those who worked on it prior were probably not around anymore. I couldn't think of anybody who was like, Oh yeah, twenty five years ago I was doing that event. So not a lot of people to <laughs> not a lot of people to chat with being like, What is the common procedure here and when do we get contacted? And how is it to work with corporate planner, planners on a, a level so extreme as a brand name that you see in commercials every day? Things of that nature. Right, right. Well, working with the NFL and all, yeah, I, I yeah. can imagine. Yeah. The ins and outs. And so a lot of the folks will remember that, you know, it was probably a month, two months, three months that they booked their major clients because they do wait until the last minute, surprisingly, to book a lot of the, the events, the details. I won't disclose what company she works for, but it's a well-known brand. And we are just going to uh, people. I'm sure people can tell that you're calling in. Um, the sound just cut out just for a second there. Oh. Um, so if we can just back up just for a moment, you said yes. that you you said that the, the the last thing that we were chatting about was that the NFL they book their things kind of last minute, which is was a little bit surprising to you. Yes, yes. So, um, and more than just the NFL, the NFL sponsors for the Super Bowl 
are the ones that plan the larger events in town. Got so it. Okay. Even they have to, and and I rightly so. There was nothing against these planners. They have to plan these things last minute due to changes. My goodness, even knowing what team's going to be in there is going to be a, a deal breaker for them, which that we was, don't know. Until two weeks that was prior. so. Yeah. I mean, I know on our end, I'm sure. We were hoping the Vikings were going to be in there, and then they yeah. didn't. They lost that last game for everybody. Exactly. <laughs> for I know. Fans. Yeah, one of my events, I had uh, a menu planned depending on what teams were in there. So oh, if the Vikings were in there, it was going to be all Minnesota menu items. It was going to be a hot um, tater tot casserole and, you know, all those things that are true Minnesota things. But then in the end, it was Philly steak uh, sandwiches and um, some seafood because of course the patriots were in it so yes yes <laughs> all those major pieces and how many and how many i know that your horror story is a specific event how many events were you doing more than one event around this around the super bowl yeah yes we were um so i was working at the guthrie theater at the time and we were blessed with eight events within 52 hours it was so oh intense gosh. that uh, my colleague and i who orchestrated the planning of them for the facility stayed overnight in dressing rooms because there's not a hotel to be available right so we are you kidding yeah, we, me right now no so great yeah the entire <laughs> weekend we stayed in the building because it, it, friday night it, our last event um we wanted to you know close it down so that was midnight 1 a.m the next morning we hosted something so early that we had to be up by 6 a.m and then same thing saturday into sunday very similar because everybody wanted to get in before super bowl started mid-afternoon <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it was it was very extreme. And then think about the level of events we're doing and then think about the level of details that go into, okay, the linens, this delivery. I mean, everything is outsourced. So all these timings of deliveries and setup um, between eight events is very interesting. So that part, now knowing the background there, one of my eight <laughs> events uh, was the prime evening before the Super Bowl in one of our prime spaces and was the coolest planner I've ever worked with. She was awesome. So, yeah. all the planning in detail. <laughs> yeah, so it all seems like a recipe for a great event, um, except for some key things that we wouldn't have been able to know and out of our, out of our control, in full disclosure. Uh, so, they brought in a celebrity chef from Iceland. And oh, wow. Okay. He was stellar because they wanted to do a true – Viking themed event um, and not because of you know the Minnesota Vikings they made it be a, that Nordic presence that Minnesota has and did more of a nod to that so yeah, imagine yeah. this two giant ships Viking ships were built in the space and that's what the tables were that everybody sat at amazing so it was, okay it yeah. was so cool and then the room that we had with the lighting was all um if you were in the middle of the night and you were a Viking going through the water, it'd be that darkness that you see with a little bit of the lit mountaintops with snow. And that's what that room backdrop looked like. Okay. I'm Again, where it. could this go wrong, right? It's this beautiful, <laughs> really cool event. So a piece of this that, um, that we kind of were uneasy about, but we're like, hey, we'll go with it is they had a beer course that was prior to the salad course that was served in ice mugs. I always have been apprehensive about using ice because I think about an event I once went to where they handed me this moonshine in an ice mug and then a rubber glove to hold it with because it's ice. No one wants to touch it <laughs> for long periods <laughs> of time. And so, then, uh, aren't you, okay, yeah, keep going because I would be really scared of this too. Oh, yeah. So they got these beautifully made ice mugs with leather, uh, what would you call it? Leather holders around them. They're like, okay, wow. good. Then they don't have to wow. wear a glove. So they could use the leather holder. So we serve the first course and we're going from uh, one level of the building to the next. It should be very quick because we have to serve in a different space. Very, very quick. I mean, within 20 seconds, by the time we get to the table and we hand the first mug to the, the guest, the entire bottom part of the mug falls out and beer is all over the individual, all over this Viking beautiful table. So we're, we're, we're not even starting the meal yet. And then this is what happens first and foremost. And then you see a bunch of the staff coming up, holding their mugs about to present them. And we're like, out, get down, go, go away. We are not doing this. We're scratching this service altogether. And so that was like, okay, only one or, 
it, probably five people knew that that happened because it was the people around that individual. The rest of the people had no idea we were about to attempt to serve them something that would make their pants entirely wet and, and present a unpleasant evening. Surprise! So surprise! <laughs> again, you'd think this would be it. And those are one thing you just can't really plan for. So maybe a note to everybody being like, if you are using ice, figure out the logistics beforehand, do a trial run. We, Maybe that's all the we want everybody to smell like they're covered in beer for the beer. rest of the night. Yeah. Oh, and I'm sure it was one of those um, oh. dark, really um, strong smelling beers. So <laughs> you'd think that that would be it. But then one of the pieces that we definitely couldn't control is that um, Larry Fitzgerald uh, from the Arizona Cardinals found out that we have a celebrity chef from Iceland. So yeah. our celebrity chef yeah. who is, instrumental to getting our food plated in time now has larry fitzgerald talking to him and asking him about iceland because he's going to go there in a couple months and seeing one of the great spaces <laughs> this conversation was 45 minutes long and of course the celebrity chef who he's a little bit more relaxed and wasn't really worried about it and us minnesotans and people who are you know type a personalities like the planner <laughs> We're like, um, we have to get going. We have to get going. But we're not going to stop Larry Fitzgerald from having his conversation with this chef. Well, because he's Larry um, Fitzgerald, too. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, we're not going to do that. Well, then at one point, I think the <laughs> CEO of this company went off cuff on a microphone. Um, and then that's when the planner said to me something that I'll never forget. She, <laughs> this packet of timelines and details. So going back to what you said, Paul about how timelines are a, a big part of the story. She grabbed the packet and she goes, I might as well throw this effing thing in the trash. Oh. <laughs> and, and that was one of the last things I kind of remember about that event. Oh. But the truth of any horror story I think that anyone's going to tell in mine is that most guests or any guests are not going to know that something was about to happen or did happen. Uh, Cause that's up to us professionals to make sure that it's not seen. <laughs> With so maybe, luckily if you were a guest, yeah. you wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> the only one that saw it was the guy that got the pants full of beer, right? And he has a great story with that now, too, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, absolutely, absolutely. I I love that part about the the celebrity chef and Larry Fitzgerald because it's it's that thing where it's like, okay, we don't want to interrupt you, but and there goes our timeline for the rest. Yeah, of the exactly. And uh, you know how food can be sometimes very time sensitive, so certain things were. Um, we're, I mean, everything came out perfect. It just wasn't according to plan. So that is always, always a deal with these things. But yeah, so that's my story. I, I bet you there's it. a lot of folks that have a, a good Super Bowl 52 horror story, if not other kinds of horror stories too. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. No, thank you so much, Elizabeth. I love the... I love the the humor in there. And yes, I think that's such a good tip. If you're gonna If you're going to use ice cups... Maybe just don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say, I don't want to, you know, offend our ice vendors out there because they're amazing. But I was going to say, maybe just don't. Just don't do it. I don't know. I just Sometimes I think ice is best in sculptures and um, other really cool designs. <laughs> really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fantastic. This is great. This has been fun. Um, anything else you want people to know about anything before I let you go, Elizabeth? You know, with this topic and why we're talking about it, we're going to be talking about it at our monthly meeting on Wednesday. I hope people are able to make it because we, we have done this topic before years back, but the main stories are the ones that really everyone enjoyed hearing. I still remember to this day, that might have been seven years ago. So wow. Uh, wow. just coming to an event and telling a really cool story, I can tell you exactly the people who told it too. So you're remembered for these stories. So please come and share them. And I've heard too that that some some of you been sharing these. Um, some people have said it's like therapy, like <laughs> getting getting all of these frustrations out. Yes, I, although as I told this story, it was bringing me back to a very dark place. I was like, oh yeah, eight events in fifty two hours, <laughs> <laughs> and you slept in the dressing room. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I slept on an air mattress in the dressing room, <laughs> which shows a. There's something in that story too. I mean, just a certain level of dedication. 
And also really, um, I think that there's so many people that work in the event industry behind the scenes. And like you said, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's noble in a way because it's like as guests, we often don't know that things are going on and things have gone wrong. And that's what makes, I think, hiring out professionals such a good idea. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Because they can hopefully predict. And I'm sure there are items that we did predict were going to go wrong and stopped, but those are the ones you don't remember. You don't remember the things that you did well. You only remember the things that you need to fix for next time. (laughs) So maybe we did some good things. I don't know, but I can tell you what things I would change for future. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I think it's great. Well, thanks so much, Elizabeth. We'll definitely see you at the next TCWP event. Awesome. Thanks, Paul.